You might not need a million gigabytes of RAM to run Google Chrome anymore. The Google Assistant will know everything that you want whenever you ask it, and a world's first in high bandwidth brain wireless interface actually working. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet, starting off with the savior of your RAM, Mighty, wants to make Google Chrome faster by streaming it to you over the internet. That is just a statement that I never thought I was gonna have to make. We have cloud streamed web browsers, my friends. How do you use it? I guess their application, essentially, they're making it so that your browser is more powerful because it's from the cloud and it can integrate directly with various low level render encoder pipelines that makes it better for things like Mac OS. They said that when we first started Mighty, our plan was to stream Microsoft Windows. An entire operating system? I guess on Mac it makes sense, but that's just, you can. But after talking to users, we learned that they were using their browser most of the time and what they really needed was a faster browser. You had to talk to people to find out that people use their browsers on their operating systems? Mighty. That's, that's not boding well. They posted a video of it in action and the responses to the video are uh, about what I'm thinking. Bye-bye uh, privacy, please know this is a horrible idea. Is this just a demo of Chrome? I'm confused. Apparently they were streaming it over the cloud. It's gonna be installed on a thin client on Mac OS and use 10 times less memory. And they also said that keystrokes are encrypted over the wire when being sent and they will keep all of your browsing history private and never sell it, which just, I don't know if I trust that, but the real kicker, the thing you need to know is that you can request access with pricing being $30 a month. Okay. This is amazing from the concept of just, I guess we can do it, so it's fine. And that's cool technologically. You can stream your, what you have to access the internet in order to bring your own web browser into the experience that's happening, but to charge $30 a month for this service. And also let's just talk about the fact that if you don't have enough operating juice on your computer to be able to run a web browser, are you also gonna have enough to run this streaming service? I don't know. It's a weird thing. What's also weird is that I'm not wearing one of my merch shirts for today's episode spot because it's dirty. I wore it and it has to be washed. I'm instead wearing Olin Rogers merch. Anyways, that's today's episode sponsor of Hot News, our own merch. You can check it out at the link in the video description. We have shirts to support my son's rare disease as well as cool tech designs like GPU Blowout, the PC, which is our designer's favorite. And he's disappointed that not as many of you bought that as he wanted. And then the Press F for emergency or the minimum little press F that you can just have people come poke your chest. I've heard it's super effective. Anyways, check our merch out at the link in the video description. And Google wants you to check out Assistant again because they made some major improvements to it with nearly perfect alarm timer responses. This is a set of three improvements that they made with the Assistant being able to understand your pronunciation of things like your name and be able to say it back to you more properly. You can make that happen. And now it can also be made to understand context clues. Like if you're trying to set an alarm and you say, hey Google, set a timer for five, no wait, nine minutes. Before it would have set a five minute timer and now it sets an actual nine minute timer. And then it also will have things such as contextually based searches. So if you say, hey Google, show me something in Miami. And then you say, show me the nicest beaches. It will know that you're talking about beaches in Miami. But if you also say, hey Google, set an alarm for 3 a.m. That will set an alarm for 3 a.m. That's, that's just a free one for you. Google also updating some of its search when you wanna set travel plans for going on right now with everything going topsy-turvy in the world and COVID-19 creating difficulties. They also have a new checkbox that you can receive an email if guidance changes, depending on where you're traveling to, whether the quarantine gets loosened or tightened, you can make that as something that gets updated to you in your email. Microsoft updating their font. Apparently the default font in Microsoft Office is no longer good enough. Calibri, goodbye. You're not what we want. There are five different fonts that can be chosen from. As of right now, they're gonna be looking towards community feedback as well as polls to determine what the community favorite is. You can check it out at the link in the video description and let Microsoft know that you don't use Office anymore because you're not gonna pay for it. You're just gonna use a free thing. And Netflix is rolling out free feature known as Play Something where it's gonna shuffle TV shows, movies to get you something so that you don't have to 
choose and take away that decision and you can click play something else as you can see right here and it's gonna play something else based on your interests. Netflix taking care of you by making you lazier than ever. No more decision fatigue, my friends, it's a good thing. Some people call it lazy like I just did or I mean, I call it life hacking, baby. You don't have to hack nothing to attend CES because previously it was digital and could have been hacked. Anyway, CES returning to its physical show in 2022, at least according to what they're reporting now, unless, you know, something devastating or once in a century happens that makes it not happen again. What is happening is Spotify is getting more popular. They announced their new numbers with their subscriber count increasing 21% year on year and active users increasing 24% year on year to 356 million monthly active users and 158 million premium subscribers. They also said that their Joe Rogan experience acquisition is performing much stronger than expected. Spotify continuing to grow, but stop making me try and list podcasts on your service. I'm just not going to do it until you make things better. The user interface is not good enough. And SpaceX thought that its Starlink satellite's orbits weren't good enough, so they applied with the FCC to get an approval to go into lower orbits than previously anticipated. Other companies such as Blue Origin didn't like this. However, the FCC did grant this to SpaceX, saying that it really won't change all of that. It's just not gonna have significant interference problems, so that's all okay. What's okay is another video conferencing app, Telegram announcing that they're gonna launch a video conferencing app in May. You're about a year late, Telegram. Everybody's going back into the offices now. And just a couple days late is T-Mobile's new tile style tracker that's gonna compete slightly directly with the AirTags. It's a little bit different enough because it uses LTE and you can track it, you know, wherever there's an LTE signal and it'll also ring when it's lost. It's water and dust resistant, but it's rechargeable. It only has a 900 milliamp hour battery, only lasts seven days as opposed to the AirTags, which can last up to a year on a user replaceable battery and cost $60. It's a completely different type of thing. I would use this when I'm like hiking, but then would I have LTE signal to even understand it? I guess in a national park, maybe. Uh, limited use case for LTE tracking, I'm sure. Let me know what you think of that down below in the comments. What's not a limited use case is iPhones because a lot of people have them and Apple, Delta, and AT&T are teaming up to give more people iPhones, specifically the flight attendants on Delta are gonna be receiving new 5G phones. So they're all getting iPhone 12s. All 19,000 plus flight attendants from Delta getting a new phone. And we're getting new electric vehicles from Volkswagen, them announcing the ID4 GTX was gonna be the dual motor, all wheel drive version of the ID4. It's gonna be smaller motors, so it's not exactly as fast as you would expect it to be, only zero to 16, 6.2, which, I mean, you compare that to the Model Y, not, or the Model E, it's not as quick, but it'll do all right. 77 kilowatt hour battery is supposed to start shipping in Europe later this summer. I think it looks pretty beautiful, but it hasn't been confirmed for the US market as of yet. And what wasn't confirmed as of yet was the Cybertruck's UI on the little screen that was on the middle, but the Tesla lead designer of UI left the company and then on his new company's webpage posted what we could expect potentially what the UI interface design of the Cybertruck would look like. And I think it's pretty futuristic. You got so many lights and things flashing all over the place. This is exactly what I would want a Cybertruck UI to look like. And I would like an electric vehicle company who's based on sustainability to have sustainable resources in place for everything that they're doing and Tesla announced on Earth Day that's exactly what they're going to do. All of the superchargers are going to be 100% renewable energy powered by the end of 2021. Just a little announcement that they made that didn't get picked up at the time that they made it. Tesla also announcing that they're going to try to get back to over 100,000 Model S and Model X production vehicles. Uh, Essentially, they've shipped zero since the beginning of the year because they're retooling the entire fabrication facility. Elon Musk saying that they're gonna to try to get back up to 2,000 a week. Now let's talk about a piece of news that's pretty close to my heart. High bandwidth wireless brain computer interface demonstrated in humans for the first time. BrainGate posting a study with IEEE of home use of percutaneous wireless intracortical brain computer interface by individuals with tetraplegia. Essentially making a brain computer interface for people who might have spinal cord injury, stroke, uh, or who are unable to speak or even locked in their own body. Them showing off that this brain computer interface actually worked pretty well and that the wireless transmitter signal in the person's brain was able to get them to interface with a robotic arm. The device only lasts for 36 hours, so not quite exactly what you would need, although you'd likely charge it while you sleep. 
However, as a father of a special needs child who very clearly understands and grasps the world way more than his body allows him to express either physically or verbally, seeing stuff like this being developed makes me excited for this future that my son has. And I'm glad that he was born at the time where we could actually do something about this and have a future for him. And seeing things like brain computer interfaces that are being done in medical situations like this makes me incredibly excited and I can't wait to see where it goes next. But where you should go next is to this episode of Hot News from yesterday, where we talked about Apple's M2 chip and how it's being produced sooner than you expected. And I'll see you in tomorrow's episodes of Hot News, my friends. Cheers.